And it is going for quite a bit, everybody. I, it continues. It, it, this is to, a very strong. Yeah, this earthquake hit right as most of us were fast asleep. The earthquake just a short time ago, about 15, 20 minutes ago. Given its reputation for seismic activity, California has long been expecting a significant earthquake. Earthquakes are caused by a variety of factors, such as stress buildup, fault contacts, and movements of tectonic plates. A significant earthquake along the San Andreas fault line has long been overdue, and a recent study reveals that a nearby body of water may have an impact on the fault. Under the direction of researcher Riley Hill, the project looks into how a nearby body of water might affect seismic activity. Although the main causes are geological processes, some scientists have made assumptions on the possible impact of dried up lakes on seismic activity. What is beneath the lake that has dried up? Let's investigate. Being aware of tectonic activity and earthquakes. Understanding the basic concepts of seismic activity is essential to appreciating the possible relationship between dried up lakes and seismic activity. The tectonic plates that cover the surface of the Earth move, causing earthquakes. Fault lines are the cracks in the Earth's crust where these plates are continually moving and reacting. When the strain along the faults eventually becomes too great, an earthquake occurs as a result of an abrupt release of energy. One well-known example of a significant fault system is the San Andreas Fault, which passes through California. It stands for the location of the major seismic activity border between the tectonic plates of North America and the Pacific. It is essential to comprehend how these plates behave as well as the fault systems in order to assess the theory that connects dried up lakes to significant earthquakes. The main transform boundary and tectonic structure causing seismic activity in California is the San Andreas Fault. The Pacific and North American plates are split apart by the San Andreas Fault system, which passes through the state for around 800 miles or 1,300 kilometers. When stress is relieved, this fault allows for horizontal motion between the two plates, which causes earthquakes. The San Andreas Fault is actually a complicated network of interconnecting faults rather than a single, continuous fault line. It is composed of many parts, each of which has the potential to cause large-scale earthquakes. The two most well-known sections are the northern section, which stretches to the San Francisco Bay area in the northwest, and the southern piece, which passes through the densely populated areas of Southern California. California is home to several more significant faults outside the San Andreas Fault, such as the Haywood, San Jacinto, and Calaveras Faults. These faults present extra seismic threats and add to the state's overall seismicity. The Pacific Plate's northwest migration, with respect to the North American Plate, is what drives the tectonic activity in California. As the Pacific Plate shifts, tension builds up along the faults at a rate of about 2 inches or 5 centimeters every year. Eventually, when the frictional barrier on the faults is overcome, this stress is released by earthquakes. It's crucial to remember that earthquakes in California can range in strength from little, hardly perceptible tremors to large, severely felt ones. Throughout its history, the state has been the site of several significant earthquakes, including the Northridge earthquake in 1994 and the San Francisco earthquake in 1906. There are significant initiatives in place to monitor and reduce earthquake risks because of the seismic dangers in California. To identify and document seismic activity, the United States Geological Survey, USGS, maintains a network of seismometers and monitoring stations across the state. This information is essential for analyzing fault activity, researching earthquake trends, and enhancing earthquake forecasting. Dried up lakes, 
sometimes referred to as plier lakes or ephemeral lakes, and seismic activity are bodies of water that undergo variations in water levels as a result of variations in evaporation, precipitation, or human activities like water extraction. There are a few theories as to how these lakes' ability to affect seismic activity as they dry up. According to one theory, water functions as a lubricant along faults, lowering friction, and promoting tectonic plate movement. The loss of lubrication caused by dried up lakes declining water levels may cause stress building along fault lines to grow. There's a chance that the building tension will eventually reach a point where an earthquake is set off. Variations in the pore pressure in the Earth's crust are the subject of another theory. The decrease in water pressure that occurs when a lake dries up might alter the distribution of stress along faults. These variations in pore pressure may have an impact on fault stability and modify the prerequisites for an earthquake. It's crucial to remember, though, that dried up lakes' impact on seismic activity is thought to be a secondary or indirect effect when compared to the main movers, which include fault contacts and tectonic pressures. The main sources of earthquakes in California are stress buildup and release along large fault systems, such as the San Andreas Fault. Although the distribution of stress on faults may be influenced by dried up lakes, it is important to take into account the larger picture of tectonic forces and geological processes. A major contributing factor to earthquakes is the release of built-up tension along fault lines, which is caused by plate tectonics. It's also critical to understand that rather than isolated elements like dried up lakes, the intricate tectonic interactions along the plate boundaries are what largely drive seismic activity in California and the potential for large earthquakes. Along the San Andreas Fault and other significant fault systems, the Pacific and North American plates are constantly interacting, causing stress to build up and release that can cause earthquakes. Ongoing scientific research is required to comprehend the connection between dried up lakes and seismic activity in California. To look into probable connections and determine their importance, scientists and seismologists use a variety of techniques such as computer modeling, laboratory tests, and field surveys. Although it is a topic of scholarly study, the impact of dried up lakes on seismic activity in California is not entirely known. Although dried up lakes might influence the distribution of stress along fault lines in a secondary way, they are not thought to be the main cause of significant earthquakes. It's crucial to take into account a variety of elements, such as tectonic forces, fault interactions, and geological processes, in order to completely understand the complexity of seismic activity in California. If you're enjoying the video so far, please consider subscribing to the channel so that scientific research in this area can continue. The part Lake Kaya plays. The researchers suggest that a major factor in stabilizing the Southern San Andreas Fault was the filling and draining cycles of Lake Kaya, which is situated in what are now the Coachella and Imperial Valleys. It was discovered that significant seismic activity along the fault line typically occurs when the lake is either completely filled or nearing full capacity due to water entering it from the Colorado River. This finding implies that the weight of the massive body of water compressed the fault, possibly relieving built-up tension and halting seismic activity. The vanishing of Lake Kaya and its implications. Lake Kaya steadily dried up during the previous three centuries, leaving just the sea and salt as remnants. According to the study's authors, the fault's stress built up over time as a result of the old lake's slow emptying, something like stretching a taut rubber band. This has led to an increase in the potential energy stored in the fault, which has sparked worries about the likelihood of a big earthquake occurring soon, seismic danger and hazard. Part of a network of faults spanning California, the Southern Andreas Fault presents a serious earthquake risk because of its close proximity to densely populated areas. 
Given that Los Angeles County alone is home to around 10 million people, there is reason for concern regarding the possible effects of a significant earthquake on this vault. Despite not being directly triggered by the main San Andreas Fault, the Northbridge earthquake of 1994 left over 70 people dead and nearly $20 billion in damages. Scientists studying seismic activity caution that the longer the time elapsed after a severe earthquake, the more tension has built up and the chance of a catastrophic seismic event increasing. Lake Kaya and efforts to recover. The results of the latest study have brought up significant issues about the current attempts to restore a portion of the Salton Sea, which was first created when an irrigation canal burst in the early 1900s. The sea's salt is getting less and more contaminated. Numerous strategies like as rerouting Colorado river flows and importing desalinated seawater have been put up to alleviate these problems. The authors of the study do, however, issue a warning that notable variations in the seas and salt's water level could potentially set off seismic activity. Therefore, it's important to carefully weigh the dangers of aggravating seismic hazards in relation to environmental rehabilitation. The idea that dried up lakes and California's long overdue large earthquake are related raises interesting concerns regarding the intricacies of seismic activity. Although there is still much to learn about the impact of dried up lakes on fault behavior, it is important to proceed cautiously and base your conclusions on data that has been verified by science. A thorough understanding of fault systems, geological processes, stress accumulation, and tectonic plate interactions is necessary to comprehend earthquakes. Even while dried up lakes could influence how stress is distributed on faults, it's crucial to see them in the context of more powerful geological forces as supporting elements. How do you feel about this occurrence? Make sure to like the video and share your thoughts in the space provided for comments underneath. I appreciate you seeing.